Welcome to the second Ina Road Animal Hospital video blog. Today's topic is pet dental health, a timely topic since February is Pet Dental Health Month. This is Dr. Lunetta. Let's begin with the basics. How many teeth does my pet actually have? An adult dog will have 42 teeth and an adult cat will have 30. And at what age does a pet have all of their adult teeth in? Between five to six months of age, the adult teeth will have all erupted. Uh, sometimes it can take a little bit longer for small breed dogs, so between six to eight months afterwards, they'll have all their adult teeth. Now, if an adult dog has all of their teeth about eight months, when does plaque, when does dental disease actually start? Dental disease can start happening as soon as they have teeth. Plaque can start forming every day. And uh, how does this accumulate? The, lead me into the process of dental disease starting. So plaque will actually start forming on a pet's teeth um, within six to eight hours after they've been brushed if you've been brushing your animal's teeth. Um, and plaque is a sticky mucousy substance that contains bacteria and since it's so sticky it adheres very well to the enamel or the outer covering of our teeth. If it's not brushed off it can start to harden within 48 hours and within 10 days that's already turning into tartar or calculus. And can tartar or calculus be brushed off once that's happened? Unfortunately, you cannot brush the tartar off once it is hardened onto the enamel. Now, if I'm looking at my pet's teeth, how do I know if uh, calculus has formed? What am I looking for? Calculus has a little bit of a yellow discoloration and sometimes can even be a bit brown. And so if you're looking at your pet's teeth, you will notice a discoloration to what's supposed to be the white portion of the dog or cat's teeth, and it will look yellow to brown in color. Uh, and then you can sometimes also see not just the calculus or plaque, or I'm sorry, or tartar, but you can see gingivitis too, which is inflammation of the gums along where the teeth and the gums come together. Now my pet has pretty bad breath. Does that mean he also has dental disease? Yeah, halitosis goes along with dental disease, and halitosis is the name we give to the bad breath that most people will come in and complain about. Now my pet has dental disease. What do I do? What you should do is actually have your pet's mouth evaluated by a veterinarian or one of the veterinary technicians, and that way we can get a better idea of the stage of the dental disease that your pet may be experiencing so that we can give you an idea of what we should do to help treat that dental disease. Now, I've heard dentals uh, are required to be under anesthesia. Is this true? Dentals to be done properly really should be done under general anesthesia. They are pretty extensive. Uh, if they're done correctly and thoroughly. So in order to be able to gain proper access to your pet's mouth, they need to be completely uh, relaxed, which means they need to be asleep. Now is general anesthesia safe? Especially for older animals, so I know they tend to generate yeah, dental We have classroom. that question a lot about, can I put my older pet under anesthesia? Now, of course, because we're putting an animal under anesthesia, there are always risks, but the general anesthetics that we have these days tend to be very safe. Uh, and we do like to do uh, a physical exam and pre-surgical lab work to make sure that there aren't already underlying problems that we need to address or take into account when we put that patient under anesthesia. So we try to do what we can to make the anesthetic event as safe as possible for your pet. Now, I've decided to get a dental done. Uh, walk me through a typical day. What is my pet going to experience? Your pet's going to come into our hospital, and one of our veterinary staff members is going to come and greet you, bring you into an exam room. They'll go ahead and check your patient in, and one of the veterinarians will come in and do a physical examination of your pet. During that physical examination, we will also do an oral exam to get a better idea of the stage of dental disease that your pet is experiencing. Um, once they're checked into the hospital, we will draw some blood for uh, pre-anesthetic blood work. Uh, we will also place an IV catheter into one of their veins so that we could administer fluids while they're um, here in the hospital and while they're under anesthesia. Once the blood work has been performed, uh, we will evaluate that lab work. If it looks normal, we will proceed with the anesthesia and dental. If there are any abnormalities, we'll contact you and go over those abnormalities uh, and decide whether or not it's okay to proceed with that dental or if we need to postpone it for a time to try to get something else taken care of. Um, once we have agreed to go ahead and proceed with a dental, um, your patient will be anesthetized. Um, we use short-acting um, general anesthetics to get them asleep first. We'll place an endotracheal tube into their trachea to protect their airways so that we can administer oxygen and the gas anesthesia that we use. Uh, one of our staff members will be um, given the um, job of monitoring the anesthesia of your pet. That will be their specific job is to make sure that your pet is as safe as possible while under anesthesia. They monitor parameters just like what we would have monitored with uh, 
an anesthesiologist. So we would be monitoring blood pressure, um, an EKG, which would also give us their heart rate, their oxygenation levels, and how much carbon dioxide they're breathing off. If there were any concerns, we would adjust the anesthetic depth or treat anything that comes along. Um, and while that person is monitoring the anesthesia, we have another staff member doing the actual dental cleaning. And a dental cleaning is done with uh, an ultrasonic scaler, just like you would have done if you went to your dentist. Uh, and once we have scaled the teeth with the ultrasonic scaler, we'll also do a hand scaling up under the gum line. Uh, and then once we have done the entire mouth, we'll determine if there are any teeth that need to be extracted. Uh, if we do, then we'll go ahead and provide local anesthetic to the area where the tooth needs to be extracted and take that tooth out. Uh, sometimes we will close those sockets, just like your doctor may close the sockets. Uh, most of the time they are left open, depending on the amount of disease that's associated with that tooth. Uh, and then we'll provide a, um, an oral rinse to help get rid of the blood and the bacteria that are in the patient's mouth, and then put a fluoride treatment on their teeth. Sounds like it's just like when I go to the dentist. Exactly. <laughs> now, how long does this procedure typically last? How, how long is my pet in the hospital? They um, are in the hospital for the day. Uh, they usually will come in the morning and they will be discharged uh, that afternoon or early evening. The dental itself, it depends on the depth of dental disease that we're trying to treat as to how long they're going to be under anesthesia. Um, most dentals, if they're not advanced dental disease, will be about an hour to an hour and a half. If we're dealing with pretty advanced periodontal disease where we may have to extract multiple teeth or do additional treatments, sometimes they are under for two and a half or three hours. It just really depends on the severity of what's going on in that pet's mouth. And now how do you grade dental disease? Is there a scale that uh, an owner could use? Actually there is. Um, we typically have four grades of dental disease. Grade one um, typically is going to be where you can see it, some tartar or plaque, uh, and we have a picture of it here on the wall. Um, and you might see some gingivitis associated with it, which is reddening along the gum line here. Uh, so you'll see some of the tartar along that area as well. Uh, there may or may not be bad breath associated with this stage, and this stage is completely reversible with proper home care and a good, proper veterinary dental cleaning. Um, grade 2 dental disease is obviously more advanced than the first stage. We are actually now starting to see some bone loss. Um, the surrounding tissues um, have become quite inflamed. Um, there's usually significant bad breath associated with this, um, and it can be a little bit tender around those areas. Grade three, definitely getting some bony destruction. Um, sometimes we can actually see the split between the roots and the tooth or feel that with a dental probe. We can't usually get the dental probe all the way through between those, um, the furcation or the, the separation between the roots. Uh, but we've got 25 to 50% of the supporting bone has now been lost in that area. This stage, um, variable in its ability to be reversed. It depends on how much bone is lost and how much damage has been done. Uh, many times we end up having to extract these teeth. Grade 4 dental disease is the worst, and these animals are often painful. Um, their teeth are loose, um, their jaw can be sore, a lot of bone has been lost, at least 50% of the bone has been lost that supports the tooth. Uh, depending on how many teeth in that surrounding area have been affected, sometimes we can actually get fractures of the jaw itself just because of how much bone has been lost. This is a completely irreversible stage. We have to extract these teeth. Uh, what stage uh, am I looking at typically for an extraction? Usually it's going to be grade 3 or 4 that we're going to be doing extractions on. If we do regular veterinary dental cleanings and you're able to do home care for your patient, we can reverse these two. Uh, so, with proper dental care, we can typically save teeth that are affecting grade 1 and grade 2. Now, I've read on the internet uh, that there are, uh, 